the millennium a prophetic forecast by Johanna Brandt chapter 2 the seven periods of Christianity in the following chapters we give a brief sketch of the various phases of the development of the Christian faith beginning with the ascension of the Lord Christ and ending with the year 1914 in which the present European conflict broke out. That the main events of nearly 2,000 years cannot be treated satisfactorily in the remotest degree in this small work will be accepted as a matter of course. And that is not the object of this book, not the events themselves, but the various phases of thought and of religious development which were brought about largely through these events, not the facts, but the spirit of the tunes in which they took place, of the great transition stages between the periods we can give no idea whatever, for they are inconceivably intricate and in many cases extended over centuries of time. Slowly, imperceptibly, gradually, these vast changes came into being. Slowly they died away again to make room for something else. For something equally important and indispensable in the progress of mankind. The establishment of the definite periods has in most cases been brought about by the sacrifice of countless lives. In scenes of carnage extending over hundreds of years, and what I have ventured to describe in a few pages would need the study of a lifetime to grasp its full significance. The reader must bear in mind that the various phases of Christian development frequently were born and existed in the same period. For instance, the reign of Constantine the Great, that period of material wealth and prosperity in the church which follows directly on the period of Christian martyrdom, was at the final Great Inquisition, a reformatory movement of no small importance. Before the Reformation, revolutions before the French Revolution. The period of martyrdom, which we find in the two following chapters, was by no means the only one in the history of the Church. On the contrary, the scarlet thread of martyrdom runs through all the ages of Christianity until the time came when the Christians no longer persecuted themselves. The same time, the cause of the rise of monasticism and the establishment of papacy. The one was the result of the other and took place at the same time. Although we have treated them separately for the sake of convenience. So we have an inquisition before that became in their turn the persecutors. When through the might of temporal power they avenged the blood of their Christian brothers in rivers of heathen blood and conquered through the sword those who through the sword had conquered them. Take the Crusades alone. Although history has been quite unable to supply us with reliable statistics of the Jews and heathen slain, Saracens, Greeks, Syrians, Turks, we know that the attempt to conquer Palestine cost the Christian church nearly 7 million lives. And this should be a fair guide in our estimate of the losses sustained by the enemy. These things should not seem quite so incredible to us if we think what is taking place in Europe at the present time. If we remember that Christian nations in a so-called endeavor to establish international freedom, are guilty of wholesale butcheries on their Christian brothers. 
the Christian churches, one and all, pray for the success of the methods employed. With an unconsciously bitter irony that haunts our waking thoughts and tortures us with an unspeakable horrible nightmares when we fall asleep. But we digress. It is the past with which we must concern ourselves in this, the first part of this book. If by force of will we can possibly tear ourselves away from the haunting terrors by which our present is so hopelessly overshadowed.